We're going to do the Zoom this way. If you could see. Okay, got it, I said. Okay, cool. That way your audio is still getting picked up. You know what I mean? Like, I, we can see yeah. you. Oh, we can see you two ways. You know what I mean? I don't know what else to do. You know? This will work. So what's going on, Rachel? What's going on? I'm in the middle of the damn desert, and it's very, very hot. And um, Ace is completely. I, I mean, I I don't know. He 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 does weird things. He called a friend of mine's phone and then said, "I got the wrong number," and then hung up. Um, I'm in this trailer. I owe rent. There's nothing out here where I'm at. I can't even dispose where I'm at because creepy things are still happening. To me. I'm getting death threats. Um. I got some really, really creepy the other the other day I got um I didn't get it. A friend of mine got it on her phone, the one that I told you that Ace called. She right. sent it to me and Ace called for his phone number and said he had the wrong number. Now from a different phone, my friend got this creepy text. Um it said that it was Laura. Actually, uh well, you need my phone. I can't read it. She it was just this weird random picture of of that weird raunchy chick with Ace. And it and it, it was this long thing that said, We got married in a secret wedding in Vegas and and you better leave, you know, and Rachel's dead to him and leave us alone and they spelled Rachel wrong and all this weird shit. So I had that number traced back. And it traced back to Tony Frank Villa, which is the bodyguard that threatened my life in the mansion. Really? The day, the day, the day of the ambush. So she prank called you? Going on. What? So she prank called you? Ace's bodyguard? Yeah. Wow. Yep. And I, I, I got two really scary death threats. One of them saying I, I've been warned. Uh, the other one saying something else cryptic and then sending a video of a guy getting stabbed to death on the beach. On the beach. Um, both of these were fake sites, you know, with like, um, you know, creepy fake sites with like, you know, no, no data or anything, just fake sites, you know. So we're and, like, um, are, they, are you texting you this shit or are you getting it on Facebook? What, 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 Facebook messaging. And oh, okay. then they texted a friend. They texted a friend of mine uh, that they were married. And then uh, I had someone reach out to Ronchi, and she and she texted the person back saying, "There's no way that I'm married to him. We did not get married. Um, and that's creepy. And this and this and this. And I and we didn't. And uh, you know, I don't know. I called. I I don't." I'm not giving up because it's my life. I called Doc McGee uh, about a month ago, maybe a little over a month ago. Right. And every time I call, he picks up and talks to me. Oh, hey, Rachel. Like it was like yesterday or something, you know? And I, I said, what is going on? What, you know, why is it okay that I'm out here and I have no place to live and I'm in the middle of the desert, et cetera? My computer just went off. Um, it's, let me put it back on. Hold on. Okay. Timer. And he said to me, Doc said to me, Jeans, Jeans never paid anybody off. You believe that shit? Doc, I, I recorded it. Doc's going, Jean never paid anybody off. Ever. Uh huh. Really? I'm in the I'm in the desert and I have like I don't have any money. There's nothing out here. I have no family. I have no one to help. I contacted Cheryl Cooper because I know Cheryl. We toured with Cheryl and Alice. And I cried and she went, Oh my god, is this still going on? Did he still not pay you? Can you hear me? I can hear you. 
Carol said, I don't even believe this. Did he still not? This has been going on too long, she said. This is ridiculous. He has to pay you. We want you to see justice. We want him to take care of you. He can't do this to you. This can go on no longer. Right? I called her back, uh, I don't know how many days later, and she said, Alice had to go to LA. And then I got a text from her um, last week, and she said, I would love, I wish I could help you. I want to be able to help you. Unfortunately, I cannot. All of a sudden, boom. Alice was called to LA. Uh, look, I mean, Barry Mallon warned me that he was going to, he said, he will make sure you cannot, that nothing will work for you in your life. He said, and I personally will get a hold of every single person that you know. He contacted people I know, harassed people that I know. Who is he? Gene's lawyer, Barry Mallon, the fucking tyrant. He's a fucking monster. He screamed and yelled at me and threatened me. These people are fucking nuts. And they will stop at nothing. And instead of just getting me a house after I was with Ace for 12 fucking years, Rexy, never, never even wrote songs for trying to get a hold of me. And they say, well, we've been, she wrote, et cetera, et cetera. And my friend said, um, how could you have been sending her her royalty checks when she hasn't even been? She's never had a steady address. So there's no way that you've been sent a valid address for her. And, and E1 proceeded to tell my friend that somebody's been cashing her royalty checks. So my friend said, okay, look, start sending her royalty checks to my, and gave them his um, PO box. I got one check in the last four or three months for a hundred dollars, four months in for a hundred bucks. Get the fuck out of here. I, I mean, I, I've done so many things for Ace. I don't even have money for groceries and I have no one to help me. I'm in the middle of, of the hottest desert weather that you can imagine. Outside right now, it's unbearable. Right now, at night, it's over 100 now. And yesterday, I will tell you what happened to me yesterday. Okay. Um, this is the stalking part of it. Not just death threats. Mind you, nobody's got my address, okay? The only person that seriously knows where I am is Cheryl Cooper. I, and my phone's been shut off. And I told Ace, I said, please, Cheryl's the only person that knows where I'm at. Can you go through her? Please help me. I need help. I was your wife for 12 years. Help me. No, no response. But he's reading. This is his regular site. This site on Facebook. That's his regular site. Not the black and white picture. The one, the other one. And he's reading every message. So I'm just, I'm just sleeping yesterday morning. I don't know. It was late yesterday morning. And someone's banging on the trailer door. I don't, there's nobody out there that would do that. I was like laying here just going, okay, my door's locked. You know what I mean? Right. And I laid in bed and I was like, fuck, I'm not going to get the door. And then I just got, they were banging on the fucking door. I get up, I go to the door. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I go in my pajamas, open up the trailer door. And this man runs up and hands me. He doesn't have me sign. He doesn't ask anything. He just runs up and he's in an unmarked van, an unmarked van. He runs up and gives me a really, really heavy, um, well, I sent you pictures, a glass face, a big giant glass cross of really, really long stem roses, big red roses that are like as big as my fist. What's that all about? Wow, that was pretty crazy. Especially if no one knows, I mean, you know, no one knows, right? No one knows no where you are. Knows where I'm at. Nobody knows. Nobody knows where I'm at. And who Ace is the only one that knows that I have that I'm into red roses. There's a there was a shifty card in it. It said that it was like this person that I know, like uh it calls me funny face, funny face. Uh it, here's here's your roses and you know or, or whatever, you know, it, you know, and then it says Yours, and I don't want to mention the person's name, but the person who it says on the card, it's not that person. That person can never, ever, ever, ever do it. And they're four hours away from where this florist is. This florist is like an hour out of here. 
nothing makes any sense. It's not Ace's writing. It's not. It's all completely weird. Well, you know, when you get something from the florist, it's in the florist's writing. You know, if you order flowers or something. Well, unless the person goes in, and, like I've done before. And you well, yeah, them, yeah, I'm just, yeah, but I'm saying, you know, the florist. Yeah, of course, but it's the florist, right? Mm-hmm. But still, why would someone? It's like a hundred and fifty dollar or a hundred dollar thing of roses. Really good red roses, really huge red roses, you know, and they're long stem. And the only person that knows that I give a shit about that is about roses like that. Or in the mansion. Every two weeks, I would have the housekeeper. Every two weeks, I ordered them from, I ordered the groceries because it was too many groceries for her to go get and clean the mansion at the same time. So I ordered the groceries. And every two weeks, I filled the whole mansion with red roses. Every room, kitchen, dining room, foyer, bedrooms, every room had big bouquets of red roses. And Ace used to kind of bitch about it you know, and complain. And I was like, look, it just cheers me up. It's pretty. I like to put the roses around the house. So nobody else knows that. Nobody else. This, this person that says that it's them and they getting a little card, first off, wouldn't do it. Second off, wouldn't pay that much money for that, for the roses to be delivered. For them. Wait, here, do you see them? I see them. And the, the vibe. Blah blah blah. Okay. It's not. Whole thing's weird. No, he didn't. He didn't show up for court the other day. Huh? He didn't show up for court the other day. Did not show up. Has not. He's hiding. Uh, has not. No. No. No response at all. When the judge, the judge gave you a default, then. Yes. Uh huh. How do you collect? How do you collect on that? Um, I don't want to like say anything about any of that right now. I don't think I should. But well, he go. I just never. I want everyone to know that I won by default, and that the fucker is 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 hiding from me. And you know what? I have a lot of other things to say. I'm sick of this whole thing now. I can't even. Twelve years with a uh, like selflessly just only loving him and everything and i and they can't even get a house for me to live in well i, I didn't it wasn't even two years or four years or five years or six years or even seven years he goes you know I mean? he goes on tour uh what in 10 days something like that right yeah with with alice cooper yeah well i mean uh couldn't you call his wife, who you've been talking to, and then garnish his wages Wait, each show. Oh, you mean Alice's wife? Yeah. Uh huh. Um. I don't. I. You know what? I don't. It's 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 not Alice that's gonna pay Ace, right? It's Live Nation. Right. Well, I mean, it's something that Ace is gonna have to answer. And I'm and I'm really happy this is live because he's fucked with this fraud thing. He used my all my personal information and my name and everything for a big bank account, a main bank account. I knew nothing about any of the business. Was never allowed to ask. Well, never allowed to carry the cards that had only my name on them. Only my for twelve years. I had no debit cards or credit cards. I wasn't allowed to carry my own passport, much less a card and if i picked it up like off the bed or in a hotel because i wanted it and i would go can i is it okay if i carry this card there's only my name on it and i even have pictures of it because if i want i had to take the information down on my phone which pissed him off and i was like well what am i supposed to do if i want to order something online or something and he's like you don't need a credit card you know i give you cash for whatever you, you need for 12 years which he did but he monitored every single bit of it you know if, if, you know, it's like he paid for me with cash only, and I wasn't allowed to carry a card, and I've got thousands of bank statements for this, for Sammy, a company that I found out I was the CEO of and the sole president of, you know? Who do you think's cashing your royalty never checks? Remsey never once paid for this company, yet he and John paid themselves all the time. Just you know, like three payments from one page of those thousands of pages would buy me a house. Right. <laughs> I mean, 
Who do you think is cashing your royalty checks? What? Who do you think is cashing your royalty checks? Well, the only people that would would, would be Hammer John. Who else would? Well, couldn't you, you saw the money going in and out of that account? And also, also, I, I, I you know, I reported it to the fraud department mm -hmm. of the bank. It's in the hands of the law now, but I'm just telling you, he's fucked. He, this is fraud, forgery, and uh, identity theft. And he won't even call me back. Anyway, um, there's 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 a bunch of statements when uh we were one place and then it there was all these uh like large amounts of money that were being taken out of um an atm in newport beach where we weren't i never went to newport beach his daughter lives in newport beach i never ever go there or went to newport beach i hate newport beach personally i'm from california i don't go there but there was there was money pulled out when Ace and I were in other places, like we'd be, you know, halfway across the world and stuff was being taken, you know, like, and I was never allowed to use the card. And if I if I asked, it would become an argument, and it would end up with me, you know, getting some cash. But he never, he monitored that cash and what I wanted that cash for. See. Like if he gave me a big wad of cash, he gave me a lot of money, a lot of money. But he wanted to know where it was going. What was I doing with it? And if we went shopping in Vegas or anything like that, he paid. He'd throw whatever I wanted on the counter and he'd get it. He fucked me royally. He fucked me so bad. He used me and fucked me so bad. And then because of the possibility of a reunion and because Gene stuck his fingers in my vagina and raped me and and did what he did to me because of all that Ace all of a sudden kept contradicted what he said in the viral statement when he knows damn well what happened you know how's your lawsuit I, with uh I almost a year later make the viral statement about it and then and then all of a sudden he it, 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 after he walks out he he says oh i don't i don't believe her i've never lied in my life especially to him about anything how's your lawsuit with gene going um it, it's all you know what it's all tied in together okay i never signed an nda with ace the whole thing's tied in together it's going to affect Gene in a big fucking way. Gene's got COVID. Oh, God, hey, what a fucking bummer. Really? Yeah, I already know about that. And you know what? Ask me if I care at this juncture when these people, Ace raped me. I mean, Gene raped me, not Ace. Gene fucking raped me. Why would I give a fuck if he has a flu? This virus. You think I'm going to go, oh, no. That's so sad. He, he fucking raped me and told my husband to walk out on me. He caught it from Paul. What? He caught it from Paul. I already heard that Paul had it first. You know who I heard it from? No. These weird texts I showed you. These weird cryptics. I got these texts from Ace. These like these messages. Paul has COVID. Poodle, I miss you, all this stuff. You know? Yeah, but that wasn't him. You showed me that shit. That wasn't him. Because you remember how you know, that... I, I, I don't know what's going on at this juncture, you know, because he's that weird. That was a fan site. That was an Ace Fairly fan site on Facebook. I know, that's what it said. But at the same time, his regular site that I know that him and John run, Right. he reads the same stuff that I send to that one. At the same time, he's reading the same stuff. You know, he reads it. It says, you know, like his little icon will go down there and you know that he read it. He's reading it. I don't even know what they're doing. The whole thing's fucking nuts. I mean, even if you're with a woman for two years, you just throw her out with no money at all to survive in any kind of way, shape, or form. You don't care that she that during a fucking pandemic that she's a, a woman who's left with no, she has no way to survive. I have no way to pay rent. I'm getting evicted out of this trailer, and then I will have I will be in the dirt in 120 degree weather. How the hell am I gonna live? I don't know. That's not right. 
right. It's completely insane. That's Ramsey, it, it's as insane as it gets. It doesn't get any more insane than that. It's you know what it is? It's terrorism. Right. Yeah, I mean it's it's a terrible situation, that's for sure. It's terrorism to treat any human being like this, but especially a woman that you spent that well over a decade with. When he's in interviews and stuff, uh, is announcing that I'm his wife, told me day and night I was his wife, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Get out, you know. I mean, come on, really? Did you finish the book? Talk? Huh? Did you finish your book? It's in the very, very final stages. And when I have, and I do it as much as I can, but it's you know, it's hot out here. It's hard to live. How many pages? Is it? I'm. I. I recorded. And that's how I do it. Oh, you didn't type it out yet? Some of it. But a lot of it is recorded. Voice memos. It's easier for me to do it that way. Are you going to do a voice to text to get it in there? Or are you, are I'm you... going to do an audio book. Oh, an audio book. I'm going to fuck them over. They better look out. Well, the... you know what? What do fucking think they're going to do to me? Are they going to come out and like seriously kill me? I'm getting death threats. Is someone going to come out in the middle of the desert and fucking kill me? I don't think that'd be called an audio book. What? I wouldn't. I wouldn't be called an audio book. An audio book is just you, like someone reading what a book is. If you're just doing something, just vocally. An audio book is a good idea, Remsky, because people these days don't have the fucking uh, patience to read. Well, you should just do like a podcast or something then. I mean, because that's what podcast. that. I that, should do a podcast too. Yeah, because an audio book means there's a book attached to it, though. You know what I mean? It should be an audio book. It needs to be. Uh, I've, I've been approached about a, a series. Fucking series will be bigger than Epstein. So fuck them. Fuck you guys. It'll be way bigger than Epstein. Epstein was disgusting. Right. It was just a rich guy that had a, that had a fucking island that had gross massages and traffic. This is, we're talking about the highest grossing biggest rock band in the world really i mean really what do they think i'm gonna do just drink myself to death or you know go get some drugs from someone in the desert and just kill, die i mean i'm a i'm a live person you, they, it's, this isn't they can't treat me like this is some kind of muslim fucking country excuse me but it isn't right it is not so what's your, what's your next steps, Rachel? What are, what are you planning on doing? I don't have anywhere that I can go. I have a cousin in, in New Orleans I can go to, but I have everything I own is in storages that I can't afford. Didn't, I have to. Didn't they just get hit by the hurricane? How, how is, she, is she okay? My, yeah, they're fine. Right. I'm just saying that's the only place I have to go. And nobody will help me get there. And you know, it's like, I need, you know, and people say to me, people say, I mean, I have a lot of people that, are, that write me that are really nice and that love me and that are, that care and understand. And then the other people say things like, well, you know, why, why don't you just move on? I love, you think I don't want to move on? It's just fucking, what? First off, we never even broke up or even discussed it. Well, I mean, I say ambush. Huh? If you won the court case, how long does it take before you can get money from that? He's hiding from me. Well, I mean, you don't need to see him, right? I mean, you know, if the, if the, if the judgment's already been placed, there's ways of collecting that income without even seeing him. Nobody is doing a damn thing. They are not answering me. They are not contact. Every, everyone's hiding from me. Well, what about his lawyer? Did you talk to his lawyer? You know what? I don't. I can't. I don't want to talk about the legal stuff right now because it's. I don't think I'm supposed to. Okay. I don't want to go somewhere I shouldn't go. I will say to everyone on earth, Ace is hiding from me, and that I am gonna. I have way more things to tell that nobody even knows about those fucking assholes. You know what? I I was afraid for a long time to say a few things because I was threatened so badly. Um, but you know what? I'm out here. I have, I have like nothing. I mean, where, where can this go besides someone just coming in the trailer and killing me? 
Well, let's hear them then. <laughs> Everything I own is fucking storage. I have no money. I have twenty dollars in my in my in my wallet. If that, there's nothing out here. There's not even a, a, a you know. I don't want to want to say where I'm at, but there's nothing out here. There's a lot of things that are just closed and sitting, and you know. So, what are those things you want to talk about, though? Ask me some questions. All right. Um, what's your? Give me the uh, the juiciest chapter of your book, then, Rachel. Tell me. Tell me. I don't want to say juicy because it's fucking disgusting. It's like, and I'm not a trash writer. I'm, I write the truth. I'm writing the truth. Twelve years of age. It's called. It's called. Um, your job is me. And your job is me is something that he said when we first fell in love and the and and before we got a place together and everything. And this is like, you know, when I wanted to go back to San Diego and, and take care of some stuff and do things and and uh, you know, we didn't move in together yet. And he looked out through a huge fit and, and said, No, 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 please. I want you always by me the rest of your, you know, forever for the rest of my life. You you, you know, this and this and this. And he said, From now on, your job is me. Your life is me. Your job is me. It, it, I only want you with me. When I first moved in with Ace in early 2009, we were inseparable in, the, in late 2008. We've been on the phone for since the beginning of 2008. Okay? Day and night, night and day, he, he called me and called me and called me and called me. And called me. When I first moved in with him in the beginning of 2009, I don't remember what part of 2009 it was, but it was like, um, you know, we we're like a done deal, you know? I mean, I, I furnished our, our place and everything. And uh, I, um, I, I never left the side, you know? Except for like maybe if I went down the street to a tanning salon, which I did. There's a tanning salon that I went to in LA, and um, yeah. I was followed by Gene. I, I I've already talked about this. I was I was followed by Gene. He just drives his own car, so he was driving. And I kept asking Ace. Uh, it happened three times, and I was like Ace, why? I kept asking why. Why is Gene following me? He's like, oh, he's obsessed with you. I said, why? Like, oh, I guess we ain't never known any frauds like you. You know, you, you demand respect, you know, and this and this. And they used to go on about, you know, go on about my mom's Jewish. And it just, you know, it still didn't make sense why somebody would follow me. I was still like, okay, well, all that's interesting and nice and great. But you know what? I don't think somebody following me. Did you ever do that accent for Ace? You mean mimicking him? Yes. Yeah. Do you like it? I've been mimicking. I've been like doing imitations since I was a little kid. Do uh, my family want to be? I was a trained dancer since I was two years old. Okay. And but I was really funny as a kid. So I, I, my family wanted me to go. My grandmother, my dad's mother. Do some impressions. My, Let me. It wasn't my mom's. Wait, it wasn't my okay. mom's side. It's my dad's side. I had a total showbiz grandma who got, and she was a Meglin Kitty with. Judy Garland and all kinds of people when she was in the thirties when she was little. And then she married uh, my grandfather on my dad's side. And then when he was in the air force, so she pushed everything on me because I was the first grandchild. And I started dancing when I was two, I had the best dance teacher. I was, I took everything and, and um, I was on like local TV, little kid TV shows and entered me in contests, you know, just that type of show his grandma, you know, right. Uh, which my parents despised it, you know, they hated it. Um, but they wanted me to, you know, either either be my grandmother wanted me to, to go and to be acting, and she wanted me to know everything, just like she, they did. They learned in the thirties, dancing, singing, being funny. But I was naturally very vaudeville. That style, you know, just like vaudeville in. in way that she wanted me to know how to do everything and she didn't have to do you know the, the dance training I, I loved and I took and I and I loved taking direction and doing that and you know fine 
but I like to sing and I did imitations and I loved just prancing around and performing when I was a kid. I would do recitals and I would do all that stuff. Let me hear some. Let me and, hear some of them uh, impressions. What? Let me hear some impressions. I, you know, I wish I was in the mood to do impressions right now. I'm sitting on the floor in a trailer in the middle of the desert. I well, wish I could crack up about that, but I mean, I'm not laughing have, about it. I'm just saying. I mean, you mentioned, you know, I have to be in a you, happy mood to to be able to. You know, I have to be in a really happy mood. I'm sorry to to, to entertain people. You're not entertaining. I mean, you're just showing off your talent. Can you do Gene? I'm very talented. Yeah, I mean, if there, if if I was eating food mm -hmm. and if I had money to live and if I had a house to live in, hear me out, Rem. If I had a house to live in, because and if I was, you know, taking care of so that I had money to live and I had a house to live in, and I had food and I wasn't completely jangled with PTSD and I was sleeping in right and everything, um, I would I. It, Without a doubt, I'd, I'd, my, my, I'd be getting my record out. Did you do any cartoon characters? Hold on. And I'd still be singing. And I would, and I would, there's a bunch of entertaining stuff that I would like to do. If there was something, if I had a house and there was, I'd go to the comedy store. I mean, I would, I would love to actually do a stand up act about my life and, and, and living with Ace. But right now, it's just not a stand up act. Right now, I have no food and no house. Do Tell me a joke, then. I don't want to tell a joke right now. I'm, I didn't even eat dinner. I mean, I, you know, with all due respect, I didn't eat dinner. I'm, you know, I haven't, I could cry, you know what I mean? Like, I didn't even eat dinner, and, and, I, and I'm not, like, on display like an animal, like in a cage, you know? I'm not a monkey in a cage that you don't feed dinner to and go, hey, jump up and down and through this hoop. So you're not here to fucking amuse me? You know, good fellas. So in the I said I was teasing. I was teasing. I said you're not here to fucking amuse me, you know, from good fellas. Oh yeah, right. I know. You're a clown for me. Mm -hmm. I'm a clown for you, right? Yeah. I'm here to make you laugh. What I'm here to make you laugh from No, I I, I mean I can't even have the time make myself laugh. And that is really awful because I'm not a person like that. I didn't grow up. That there would even be that there was even such thing as monstrous people like this. I didn't know that there was. I didn't even know that people in this world would be this horrible to me. I didn't even know it. Well, you know, it's not going to be an audio book because you're not typing it out. It's going to be something different. You know what I mean? You should make it a podcast. You can do different episodes. Could not be. All of it typed out. Yeah, I know. You said you just did it by audio, right? You said you're. How many pages is it? I can't. I'm not going to tell you right now. More than 300? It's about... Um, it's like Aces. It's about that with... It's going to be like that. I never read his book. Well, anyway. I read Brian Wheat's book a lot to from, from Tesla. It's a little bit about me. That was pretty good. You know, in the beginning, a little bit. I would cowboy my The story book. isn't that. The story is the nightmare that nobody knows when doors are closed. Are you... And also, a lot of things that I've seen, been through, and with the whole situation, you know what I mean? It's kind of like, you know, think about, I mean, for God's sake, Priscilla Presley went through it, you know what I mean? And she's darling, but she doesn't have kind of she doesn't have the wild personality i do she doesn't she's not as outspoken as me did you ever meet her and she just allowed and things happened to her and elvis was off you know what you said did you ever meet her? No, never met her i think they were together what six years we can't compare El you name any elvis to couple, ace name any celebrity couple with a superstar husband and you tell me what celebrity guy, I don't care who it is, what, what big rock star guy mm -hmm. didn't make sure that no matter what, the woman got a house and she's taken care of. I don't care if it's two years or three years or six years or seven years. You know? I was with Ace longer than he was a kid. Longer than he was with any other woman. Bullshit. 
Not only that, I went above and beyond my duties as a wife. Was that like a every single thing? Hmm? Was that a rhetorical question? Did you really want me to answer? What celebrities didn't do that or no? I think that the only asshole that you could say was just like literally like treated a, a woman like a you know, I mean death threats and the whole nightmare thing is Steven Tyler. And I was told what a fucking asshole he was by Gene and A. Did you ever meet him? I mean, and if those guys are gonna tell me he's an asshole, then uh, you know, come on. I know some. I know some real serious things that were not allowed to leave the mansion. I think they said Ace said, yeah, and it doesn't leave the mansion. You know. Now, here's why it should be a podcast, okay? Because but a podcast is a pain in the ass. I don't want to sit there and rattle off about a story. I, if, if somebody can buy the audio book and then like lay in bed and do what people do and have their glass of wine or whatever and listen to it, that's what people like. Well, it wouldn't be called. It wouldn't be an audio book because there's unless there's a book attached to it. Here's why you want to do a podcast because each episode can be a different story, right? And then you could have guests, like people that were involved in some of this shit. You know what I mean? Like there had been people you still talk to that I are still around. Idea. I never said I wouldn't do a podcast. I will. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll totally do a podcast. Yeah, I'll totally do a podcast. I mean, you know, then you could do the impressions of the people, what you're doing, because that's entertaining to listen to. I love when I you, know. you know when you do Ace. I haven't heard you do Gene yet. Can you do Paul? Excuse me? Can you do Paul? I, yeah, here's, here's Paul. All right. Here's Paul. Every single time Paul saw me, here's what Paul did. Here's what Paul did. He would go. And then here's Paul. He would turn around and go like this. And run. That guy is one of the weirdest dudes I have ever met in my fucking life. And he... Ran. Did you ever chase him? When I first met him, I mean, in person, that is, you know, uh, I put my hand out to shake his hand. And I, and I, you know, I was all tan and I had a white fruit coat on and I had a cute outfit on and everything. He, he turns around and he looks at me and my, I had my hand out like this. And he turned around and he goes, that weird, like, I saw a ghost look like this. Really weird. And then he goes, and you are? And I go, um, I said, I'm Rachel. I'm, I'm Ace's fiance. Hi, nice to meet you. He put his hand up like this and he kind of, like, pulled away. He backed up out of, I was in a hotel restaurant bar, sitting there having a Oh, and I was sitting. He backed up and backtracked like a dog does, but he wouldn't take my eyes off me. He backed up all the way into the lobby and leaned up against a, 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 a wall and made a phone call and then talked and but while staring at me, like he was talking about me and staring right at me. He did that for like 20 minutes. I went upstairs in the hotel and I told Ace, this is when we were all in the hotel for the Rock Hall of Fame. And it was when everybody was arriving at the hotel. So I went upstairs to our room and, and he was talking to your, he was being managed by Dave Fry at that time. And he was talking to Dave. And I said, I just met Paul Stanley in the lobby restaurant. And they both like cracked up. And he goes, were you what, just now? And you're wearing that? I wait for jeans and that with your fur. And I said, I just walked up. I just met him just now. And they and then they they both look away and start like cracking up, kind of macho style, you know. Oh Ace goes, ah, ah, you know. He probably thought if you were gonna be some ugly boy or some like some drug addict or something, ah, you know. And I was like, yeah. Well, and he's like, it's a good thing for him. That's a good thing. Cause he fucking looks beautiful. So fuck him. Twice a dog. I'm like, okay. Um. I just went in the other room and just sat there like, what kind of, what am I even in for with this, with these guys? Gene called the room and they talked 
and they would all talk, but I would say, why can't you guys just meet and hang around before you do this thing? Because this is a big thing. You know? You just gotta call each other and act all shifty. You can be on the phone with each other for hours like old ladies, but you can't go meet up and have a dinner or some shit before you go and get inducted into the Rock Hall of Fame. Something you all want really bad. This is it's supposed to be great. You know? Right. That's not how it works, total. Can I do something about my hair? I don't know. I don't, I don't know why. They, they didn't want to meet up with something. I don't know. What the fuck? What do you want me to do? What's new? They're fucking, they're fucking nuts. What's new? I was like, um, I, it's just normal to want to like meet up and do that, you know? Who's a better guitar player, Ace or Tommy? Why all this stuff when I'm starving in a trailer? You're, uh, the, you're the one who told me. Guitar player? Yeah, huh? It was, I mean, you know, who's better, Ace or Tommy? Question. Um, Ace is a better goddamn guitar player. Okay. Look, you know, I met Tommy, and Tommy's a gentleman. And I don't even link him in with those assholes. I don't know why he's employed by those guys. I know, I didn't do my Uh, but he was just a gentleman. And, uh, you know, sort of a regular simpleton type guy. Tall, um, handsome, not my type guy, but you know, uh, have did I you say handsome? A little bit. I'm not a kiss guy. Okay? Did you, did you say handsome and not your type? Well, I, but I put up little, I guess, regular people would think he was. So you don't think Ace is handsome? No, I'm talking about Tommy. I know, I know you're talking about Tommy. So you don't think Ace is handsome? I, you think Tommy's better looking than I Ace? Think Ace? I think Ace is very handsome. I was with him for 12 years of my life. But Tommy's he's better looking. When he's a nice person. He's handsome when he's a good man. He's handsome when he's good inside. But when you're bad out on, when you're bad inside, and you are, um, you know, you don't. When you pay a bodyguard to threaten your wife's a twelve years life in your house, when you're a violent asshole. And you don't care, and you and you leave somebody for dead. That doesn't make you handsome anymore. Did you see what I was doing there, Rachel? I wanted. To, did you see what I was doing there, or no? No, not really. I was paying attention to what I was trying to say. I'm, you know, I'm sorry. I'm tired. I'm hungry. I'm hot. What? What were you just doing? What I was doing was, I was asking about Ace, comparing him to Tommy and whatnot. And I'm seeing your your action. You know what I mean? If you All truly. Right, If you truly hated Ace, you know what I mean? You wouldn't, you would have been like, fuck him. Nah, Tommy's no, better. That's stupid. I'm not a stupid person. So I'm not going to go, I hate him and he's not handsome and he sucks at the guitar. But that's completely, you know. I would just check it. not a liar just because he's, uh, you know, acting this way and being awful and everything doesn't mean that I should turn around and and go, well, I'm going to be even worse. I'm going to, I also, I will like up that. I'll be even more of an asshole. The truth truth is, is that I loved the man for 12 years. I don't know why he did this, any of this to me. I'm pissed off beyond anybody. You know, I'm upset. I'm pissed we never had a breakup. How, I mean, I cry and scream because I don't understand why anybody would, would be this way. Why anybody could treat anybody this way, but it has nothing to do with who's a good guitar player, who, what kind of musician any of them are, or any of that. I'm talking about what kind of human beings they aren't, are not. I there's this guy that was human because I had him very sober, healthy, tan, having a good, healthy life for a long time. He praised it and talked about it in the press and everything, even on celebrity ghost stories and in his book and in interviews, etc. But this, what he's doing to me right now is monstrous. How, how could I even? Who was on celebrity ghost stories? Ace. For what? Is he a ghost hunter? Sell in 2010 on the property in New York. Right. And 
I won't deny a lot of weird things happen in the house. I'm not going to deny that I, you know, of course I, I believe in supernatural. I do. So does Ace. If you, if weird shit happens and it happens out of the blue, what are you going to do? You, gotta, you have to go, you got to broaden your imagination a little bit to go. There's other things besides us here. Okay. But I fell down the stairs in that house and I hurt myself very badly. I was laying on, I, three flights of stairs, I fell on some slick tile. The, the, and I come from, a ghost push you down. Did a ghost push you down? I don't want to discuss how I fucking fell because it is weird how I fell. What was it? But that's not the point here. Okay. The point is that I broke three ribs and I was in a lot of pain and could die because some jackass uh, and Ace does the set tile put that weird gas station slick tile at the bottom of the of three flights of stairs. Who does that? Anyway, I was laying on the floor crying and screaming because I couldn't move and I knew I did something to myself and I never broke anything and I and I and Ace is sitting over in the kitchen having having his tea just staring watermelon. at me like a watermelon. you know, like he had a lobotomy and I was crying going, Ace, I need you, you to help me get up. I was screaming like please help me get up. I can't get up. Seriously. I, I, I knew I, I was disoriented and I and I and I was in a lot of pain. I couldn't move. I'm wearing water. Finally after fifteen fucking minutes. He walks over and leans over me and goes, oh, uh, can I help you get up? What, what, do, you, what do you need? Okay. I, he, did, he says in Celebrity Ghost Stories that, he, oh, I took her right to the hospital. No, he did not take me to the hospital or the doctor at all. Instead, uh, a couple nights later. So he ghosted you. A couple nights later, I said, I, I, I had I was up and didn't sleep most of the night, and I woke up in the morning and I just said, We're, "I'm getting out of here. I don't want to live here anymore. I, I, I'm, I want to go back to California." And he said, "No, I want to go too." You know, but in Celebrity Ghost Stories, he says we had a psychic out the house. We did not. You know, he barely left anyone in the house. Barely left a, a housekeeper in where we live. But I mean, we never got a psychic out there. He says we did it twice. He says he took me to the hospital right away, which he should have done. He did not do. By the time we get to San Diego, we're looking around for a place. We go to Puerto Vallarta on vacation. I'm running all over the beach. And I, the only time that I know that it hurts, it hurts really bad. Yes. But it was worse in the morning when I couldn't sit up and he had to help me get up. We get back to Puerto Vallarta. I go to my doctor's in Coronado. And they're like, Rachel, you... You have three broken ribs. You broke your ribs and you fell down the stairs. And I was like, oh my God. And then he starts crying in the hospital. My poodle, oh my God. I, you, I, I put you on a plane with broken ribs. You know. This is the worst ghost story ever. No, it's not. It, there's weird shit happening in that house, but he didn't tell it right. I'm just, it's not about the house or the ghosts in the house. If there were or if there was, it wasn't. And it's not about that. It's about. It's about why is this rock band and why is Ace and his, and his associates allowing me after that many years to not be able to live? And there's COVID rules still. It's been a vi it's been a, a deadly virus for two couple of years, and I have nobody to help me. And why? Why is he doing this? Why? You think he's still gonna go on tour? I'm a very fucking reasonable person. What? You think he's still gonna go on tour? Like how? With Alice? Yeah, you th yeah. A lot of bands are getting COVID and canceling. You think, you know, I mean, he's older, you know. How old is he right now? 70-something? Yeah. He... 72? His birthday, his birthday is 427-51, so do the math how old he is. And you know what? Let me tell you something. It's just not... You keep getting around it like it's like it's funny or cute or something, and I, I you know, seventy. I want to be, I want everyone to be, I want everyone to, you know, like me and listen to me and everything. But this is like a really horrifying thing that's been done to me, you know. That is terrible. It's really, really terrible. It's not just terrible. It's it's unspeakable. It's illegal. It's 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 terrorism. It's, Gene raped me. He sexually assaulted me, and what he did in our home, in our home at 4277 Via Ravello, in the, in, the, in the bridges in our home, is is insanity. It's 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 rape. It's not. It isn't all right. 
And you want me to cry a fucking river because he has COVID? I would. I didn't. I was just mentioning it. I was bringing it up in conversation. Well, you know, I can't care. And between Doc McGee and the manager Barry Mallon, who is who threatened me and screamed his head off at me. I thought that um, Barry's a lawyer, right? That was one you're talking about earlier. Real serious fucking asshole that screamed and threatened my my life, every aspect of my life. We will make sure nothing happens for you. You know, like I'm like, whoa, shit. Oh my god. You know, my friend was over at the time. He's going, no way. That guy can lose his fucking license for that kind of talk to you. You know. Yeah. I don't know who they think they are. I don't know either. Really don't. What? I don't know either. I don't know. It's fucked up, Rachel. It really is. Yeah. Well, you want to know anything else? What do you want to know? You tell me. You know? I didn't want to hear about how Gene told Ace that once you fuck a 12-year-old, you don't want to ever go back. What? Would you, what? Yeah. So he told Ace. He goes, well, you know, Gino, we said, uh, you know, after you, after you get 12 year old pussy, you don't go back. I said, what did you say to me? I got sick now. Yeah, it's disturbing. He's a fucking sick pig. You know, he makes his own soda. Fuck you, Gene. Get a fucking shot. Get a, get a, get a fucking penicillin shot. You know, I don't have anything to say. Gene has to pay me. Kiss has to fucking pay me. You think, uh, you think if Ace called you up, you'd go back out with him? If he smoothed things over? Know that question. Hmm? It's not, it, it, this is not a matter of, um, yeah. you think I'm going to take a handshake from that dude? From who? After 12, after 12 years with Ace, you think I'm going to go, yeah, I'll, what's, uh, you know, let's go eat a steak and I'll give you, a, and I'll believe whatever you say. What are you talking about? He had my life threatened, Ramsey. He had a, that big, huge woman bodyguard, Tony Francovilla, put her fists up in my face and threatened my life and said, I'll fucking kill you right here in your own house. Not good. So, no chance. I don't know how to answer that, you know. I can't even, I don't even know how to answer that. The guy's acting like I'm not even, like I don't even exist. And I only loved him for 12 years. You know, I didn't do one thing wrong. We never broke up. We never had a breakup. Two weeks before he left, we were on my birthday trip. I don't understand, you know. Nothing ever. No warning, nothing, zero. How do you leave somebody for dead? What is he like? Twenty years older than you, right? He's eighteen years older than me, and, and he's seventy. You want to see the want to see the stack of fraud of fraudulent bank accounts? It's called Sammy Space Ace Music I found Who's... out the bank handed me all. Listen, the bank handed me all the the, the statements for the account and said because you know why? I got told I was the CEO and and the sole president. I Who's said, Sammy? Real interesting. I never had the card. I was never allowed to ask about business. If I asked one question that had anything to do with the finances or business or anything, I was told to shut up. You don't ask about business. That's not what you ask about. So you, you know, you 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 go over there. Quiet. Just only just if you look at the stack and you look at you take one page, a random page out of the bank statement, and you look at them three. Payments, you know, three lines which would buy me a house and set me for life. You, so, you think I Ace has that kind of money, money, though? Check this out. No, I'll be right back. Let me get it. See this? This is it. Fraud, forgery, identity theft. 
this entire account is only in my name with my information, my name, and I'm the CEO and the sole president of this fucking company where there was so much money. It was like stupid. And you know what? Yeah, else? You, do you still think Ace as has as that kind of money? Out, Rem, as soon as he walked out, you know, he ran it into overdraw. We used to watch that movie called Born Yesterday. It's a 1950s movie, not the later version with Melanie Griffith. The, the original movie called Born Yesterday with Judy Holiday in it. It was one of Ace's favorite movies to watch with me because he would say, look, it's just like me and you. Well, yeah, it is. It's, it's, it's a lot like us. It's exactly like, like us in many, many ways. And it's a funny movie. It's great. Judy Holiday's genius. The cast is great. But watch the movie and watch what that guy does to her. What's the movie called? She, says, all I, she goes, all I do is sign. And, she, and uh, because her husband's a gangster who launders money and run, and uses her name for all the accounts and fucks her over. And she finds out about it in the end. William Holden's in it. Judy Holiday, And I forget the name of the actor that plays uh, her husband, Harry Brock. But he's really identified with Harry Brock. So he pulled the same stunt on me, the exact same thing. Only William Holden isn't like, you know, there's no William Holden in the fucking picture. A tycoon hires a tutor to teach his lover proper etiquette. Well, other than that, okay, look, a movie. Everybody who's watching, listening to me right now, watch. It's a brilliant movie that you should watch anyway. It's funny. It's a lot of things. And Judy Holiday died at a very young age, and she's a genius, and she's one of my favorite actresses. She was one of the first dumb blondes. I'm not saying that I'm a dumb blonde. I'm just saying that I, she's, she, she's, she was brilliant uh, at playing Billy. What was her, that was her name in the movie. But the way that they interact and the lifestyle and the, the people around Harry and his assistants and his managers and the way his manager said to him, and he, and, you know, he, he, he says, I swear to God, it's, it's, it's like to a T in us. His manager says, hey, you've been with her seven years. Harry, you know, why don't you go ahead and marry her? You know, you go over there and say she owns more than you than more of you than you do. You know, and, and Harry argues it. In the end, she finds out what's going on with her, and she gets control of the finances. And she goes, you know, I'll give them to you once once a month, you know. If, if you're good, you you dumb on, you know. See you watch the I told you I'd get you to do another impression. You just did another impression. I told you I'd get one more out of you. Yeah, that was that's Judy Holiday in Born Yesterday. All I do is sign. Because he would go sign this paper, you know, and she was arguing. And it's like, all I do is sign. You know, and they sat playing cards together. But I mean, if you watch the way that they act and the way that he acts, the way he pushes people around, the way he acts, that's just how he acts. That's that's him and I do a tea going to Vegas. That's how he would act. Like me and Ace and John and all the people around Ace. Who's John? John Ostrowski is his personal assistant. He won't have a manager. He had a manager for a while and fired him. And he won't fire John. He's wanted to fire John a million times. He says, he, he's got too much on me for what I can. Yeah, I like it. Gene ordered him to fire his band and to fire John. I was there when he did it. He did it on, on the phone. He did it when we went on tour. You know, he always said, get rid of John. I don't like John. And he called, he called it to go. He, he was the one that said, this is, it's Gene's fault that he, that he fired Richie and everybody. He said, I don't like them. Fire him. You know? Gene's like, well, you know, like Chris can do whatever he wants, and you know, and Scotty, you know, he's talented, and, you know, he's your age and shit. But you know, Richie's my friend, man. And I'm like, well, then why are you doing that? Why are you even entertaining that? Why? You know? Right. Because Gene, because Gene wants me to, because he bows down to fucking Gene. He bows down to him. There's nobody in the world he fucking bows down to, Gene. Why do you think that? Um. Well, it, you know, let me get a little bit like heavy for a minute. 
a little bit like, you know, there's, there's depth there. There is depth there. And the depth is this. Ace, you know, uh, I wrote two songs about him and for him. Um, but Ace grew up in a very, very, very bleak situation. You know, I saw he brought me and showed me the neighborhood, the apartment he broke in, and, you know, I know the whole situation. He glorifies it a lot. But the fact of the matter is that his father completely ignored him, that his, his mom, his dad's gone every night. The guy who's an electrician. Yeah, okay. In the Bronx, he was just out doing electrical, electrical work all night long, every night, and then bought them all a brand new Cadillac when they're that poor? No. And then when I told me that they did used to go out to nightclubs, and the mom, in order to spend time with the father, the mother went out, and she was gone every night. So Ace was stuck with his brother and sister. We didn't necessarily get along with very well. And, uh, Wait, are we fighting someone or something? Anyway, he got stabbed when he was a kid. Gangs, you know, yeah. fucking rough time. And he started playing the guitar, and you know, started looking, started being, you know, cool looking and all that stuff. And got a job, you know, uh, being a roadie for Big Brother and the holding company. Got a job being a roadie for Hendrix because he looked cool, because he had a, because he was lanky and great looking, and you know, nobody really knew that the guy was talented too. You know, because Ace can play guitar further than anyone here. He plays guitar better than he plays than he plays. I just want to say that. He can sing better and he can play better than is played than fucking Deuce, you know? I like Fractured Quantum and I like his stuff that he does. I'm gonna that's nice of me to say in this fucking situation where I'm almost dead. But I'm not a liar and it's not it, you know, I, I, I have to say that. He's He's a talented person. But anyway, it, it, he, they got this guy who grows up in the Bronx in a shitty way. He's ignored by his parents. His only joy and his only happiness growing up is when he would go visit his, his, his relatives and his cousins in Carolina. Hence the picture of feeding watermelon on a, on a table when he was a little kid. So when he grows up and he's a teenager, are you hearing me? Oh God, I'm listening to you. And he's the teenager and he's supposed to be learning stuff about etiquette. How do you treat a woman? How do you be a gentleman? How do you be a man? You know what I mean? Like, apart from being in gangs and carrying a knife and all that stupid fucking Saturday Night Fever horse shit, you know, when he's supposed to be learning that, he answers an out of the village voice. And who has their... Who's who's got his tongue right up Ace's ass right away, Gene? Because they knew right then he is he's good, he's good looking, and he thinks up these riffs. And he's you know what? He's 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 gonna be able to. He'll take he'll take uh, orders. You know he'll he'll take not orders but um you know we can command him. You know what I mean? Right. He can take order. Uh, I don't know a better way to say that uh, for, for lack of a better way of putting it. But so Gene takes on straight up. And I've seen it in action. Okay. I've seen it in fucking action. I've seen it in action. Okay. I'm this little tiny girl next to those two big oxes. And I've seen the way it goes on. He calls Ace young man. Young man this and young man that. He would call me Ace's better half. I want you to bring the other half here, here, here. Which they owe me money for. I was the head of the company and I, I was, here I am. I was taking fucking orders too. I had to jump and go on fucking tour with Gene after he put his hands on me. You think I wanted to do that? No, I did not. Ace threatened, I'm going to kill myself. I can't do it if you don't go. Cool. I ain't going to. I'll fucking cancel. I gotta go. You know? I also had to go and attend the first false experience at the Capitol, which I did not want to fucking do. So, I don't see, you know, let me say something, Ren. Uh, and let me ask you something. Do you see any of the other wives uh, going on tour? 
and get called a uh, poodle and go on tour and, and paying as much at, uh, of attention to them as I pay to Ace. Where's the, are the other wives going? Let me know. Do you, have you seen them go? No. I'm asking a, a question, a yes or no question. Huh? No, no. Yeah, I was thinking, no. Yeah, it's, it's, you know why? Because they don't, people. It's because they don't. And I was, you know what? I did a lot. I helped every single little tiny little thing. I, I only gave him love and care and, you know, like a gigantic child, which is what he is. Which is okay if you're not going to be a fucking asshole from hell and, and harm people. But uh, I, the answer to what you asked before, why do you think that's so, is because Gene took on the role of being like a father to him. That meant if anything ever went wrong, you'd say, you know, Gene was here, this wouldn't be going on. Gene wouldn't let this go on. He looks at Gene like that. You see what I'm saying? Gene's got him wrapped around his little pinky. So he put his hands on me because he figured, well, you know, hey, but what Ace is gets to be mine. If Ace is getting that uh, that beautiful uh, body and vagina over there, then I'm going to put my hands on it. That means I get it. I can't see you, but that's okay. I'll just keep talking. Anyway. Can you see me now? Yeah. So... Yeah, you know, like, you know, they're like, uh, they're the family to Ace, you know. Well, I was family for 12 years. I got to be paid for the things that I did and went out of my fucking way to do. When we went on tour with, with Gene, all of a sudden, we're, I mean, we're exhausted because we're touring. When you tour, there's no time to do anything. You barely eat, you barely sleep. And all, and, and all of a sudden, we get this, this call from from Gene saying, hey, tomorrow we got to, or tonight, I think it was that, that same night, you got to, you, you and you and your better half, I want you to show up at this benefit. You're somewhere in the Midwest. I was like, what benefit? Yes. It was a, a huge benefit. He goes, some of the wealthiest people in the whole world are going to be there. I want you, to, it's very, very formal. So you and your better half, you need to, uh, I, I want you there and looking formal and looking for fitted for suits and find suits to wear the whole fucking thing. So we go to this gigantic benefit that, that was about these portable hospitals, you know, those things to be able to drop them in third world countries and help people. Right. But really was and really excited that Ace and Gene are there and me and they can, and you know, I'm bombarded to talk to these jerks the whole time and then some woman that was in her 80s with diamonds hanging off her uh, was like in charge of the whole thing and I asked Ace, I said, what's what's up with, with Gene on stage like, you know, like it's the fucking Sonny and Cher show with this, this, you know, woman in her 80s. What's going on with the, what's, the, I said, no, 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 come on. No, he, he, he does. You he fucked it. That's why we're here. That's what's going on. And shut up that suit. We'll talk about it later. Like, um, oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, is it, you know, I, I, and he tells the can of peaches story and the whole thing and all this, you know, but, Point being, I was ordered around to do stuff with Ace, okay? Do you see the other wives attending the thing? No, but I was. And I was told, do this, do that, show up, bring her. I want your better half. He never called me the fool like everybody else did. He called me Ace's better half or his wife or his beautiful wife or whatever. And I want you to bring her. And I want her so, and, and, and Ace is telling everyone now, yeah, I don't think the reunion happened because uh, I don't think they got along with, with uh, my ex. What was that? What? what was that TV show? What? What was that TV show that Gene had? Family Jewels. Yeah. Why didn't it. Why didn't you and uh, Ace do a show like that? You know what? There was talk of us doing a reality show, which when we lived in the penthouse, which is around mm, 2016 or 17 or something. And I don't know. I talked it over with Ace a lot, and um, and we laughed about it and stuff. And Ace was like, I don't want anyone in the house. I don't want somebody up our ass all the time. And I was like, Well, I think that they go when you want them to go. I don't think that they sit around and you know go to the bathroom and stuff. I mean, so when when we had to do the tour with Ace, I mean with Gene in uh, 2018, we were you know we went to airport lounges, you know. 
I had to sit with the predator in an airport lounge every time. I wasn't, I was pissed off, okay, but I had to take orders from Ace. Both of them were up my ass to the point where I felt like I had two jerk husbands, you know, like, don't, don't talk to them, come over here. And then, you know, and then, you know, they're both like ordering me around and, and shit. So it's the airport lounge. So Ace, Ace is like, hey, Jean, hey, is Shapula and I do one of those reality shows? Stop talking to somebody about it, you know? Are they up your ass all the time? These people like come over to your house and, and, and get up your ass and they don't leave you alone or what? And he goes, I would absolutely do it. No, not at all. And you, do, you make a, a, you know, you make a lot of money doing it and that's all I care about. And when you want them to go, then they go. And I think that would be a very, very good idea. It's very profitable. And I was like, I don't care. I would do it. But, you know, Ace is like, yeah, I don't know. Tell people come over. I don't like people in our house, you know. I mean, if the housekeeper stayed too long, you'd get bugged. So it would have been interesting. It would have been more real than, than the family jewels. That's for sure. You, you just I feel sorry for Shannon's show. I feel sorry for Shannon because Shannon just seems upset all the time, you know, and not not happy. You just did a Gina impersonation, by the way. Huh? I said you just did a Gina impersonation, by the way. I impersonate people because no. when I'm talking about people, whether I'm pissed off at them or no matter what, I mean, I just have done that since I was a little kid. I'm an imitating person because I'm trying to get that across to whoever I'm talking to exactly how it was the situation was so you just imitate people I don't know no I asked you to do it earlier and I you know when you finally you did it, you, I said it was, well, earlier I said it was easy too right you know now uh, with this audio book are you going you're going to do the voices then too right you're going to be in the one reading it yeah yeah and the podcast so I'm not going to not be myself. I'm not going to morph into somebody else. And not, you know, I'm not going to not be me. I'm going to be me talking about what happened to me. Who would be your first guest on your podcast? It depends. People call in the podcast. Right? Yeah, I mean, you also set people up to be on the show. You know what I mean? You book yeah. guests. Who would, who would be your first? Who would you want as your first guest? Probably uh, the woman that Steven Tyler tried to uh, catch on fire in the house when he got pregnant by, by him. Who's that? I, I have I have her. I forget what her name is. It's She went through a terrorizing time. What about Vinnie Vincent? I'd love to have Serena Fox, but she died. And don't say it wasn't because of Steven either, because he beat her to a fuck. Oh, and then all of a sudden at 49, she just dies of an inoperable brain tumor when he punched her in the head all the time. Vinnie Vincent would be a good guest. I don't know anything about that guy. I know some uh, gross stuff about him, but uh, I don't know anything. I don't really know. I, I, I don't know. So you never really talked to any of the replacements, then, besides Tommy? I, yeah, I did. I talked to Eric Carr. I think really really nice i think i think eric Carr's like when i met him i thought he was hilarious he was a gentleman he's funny kind, sweet he didn't take any bullshit from them he stood up to gene and, and pulled him off in a room like you know hey by the way gene i'm talking to these people you know you're not in the fucking room you know i liked eric Carr right off he's very likable or not eric Carr, eric singer eric singer which one uh I'm tired what... and I can eat dinner which one went to prison? I lost it and I didn't eat dinner. I have I eat some crackers because I have no food. And um I think there's a yogurt in the fridge. Eric Singer is what I'm talking about. And funny, funny, and funny always wins me. Which um, which one of the replacements went to prison? Wait, what was the question? I said which one of the replacements went to prison? I don't know. You know what I'm talking about or no? Who replaced him and went to I think it was Mark St. John. What guy in Kiss originally went to prison? One of the guys who replaced the guy. Yeah, one of the replacement guys. I don't know. 
It was Mark St. John. Yeah, I don't know about that. Yeah. I don't, even, I don't know, and nor do I care. It doesn't affect my life. It never did affect my life, so, you know. I'm it, not. You had know, a pretty wild story. I, I didn't grow up listening to Kiss. I didn't listen to Kiss. I listen to everything but Kiss. What's your favorite Kiss song? If you, had, um, if you had to pick one. I think they're a good pop group. I mean, I... What's your favorite song? I don't even have a favorite Kiss song. <laughs> I liked Beth when I was a kid, you know, but everyone did. You slow dance to it and you, you listen to it. And, you know, I don't... I'm not, a, I'm not a Kiss person. And right now they make me sick, so ask me what their favorite stupid ass song is i i i i don't know as far as ace goes i like his instrumentals but i like um i like juice i mean ace doesn't have that kiss money though right excuse me i said ace doesn't have that kiss money though right kiss money yeah like all he, their money's wrapped up together he ain't rich like fucking gene or paul there's no way he, he, he doesn't have the money that they have, but all but he has plenty of it. He never runs out of money. Furthermore, all their money is on an island. I'm just going to say that. Which one? You know, the kind of fucking money that I'm asking for is money they can get. I'm not even being an asshole. I'm not even being a greedy, you know, well, I wouldn't even, there is no woman that would be greedy in my situation at all. You, you think you know, Ace is still I'm rich? I'm in a fucked up situation that they put me in. But Everybody probably wants to know, well, God, what does she want? Like a Lamborghini and a house in Malibu? No, I don't. No. No. I'm a bohemian. I'm an artist type, so I don't want that. You know, I, I want I want a house. I want money to live. But one house is pretty nice when you're talking about. Which it's one? the one... Uh, you posted on your Facebook that you wanted. Yeah, and, you know, I mean... It says Ace's net worth is only a million dollars. Yeah, but, I, you know, I also was thinking about it, and I want the one that I lived in in the pitches. I want, because I like, I like um, Tuscan. Uh, you know, I like Spanish, and I like the Haciendas and the, and, the, and the Tuscany design, you know, so... It says Ace's um, net worth is only a million dollars. Bullshit. On the computer. Yeah, right. Look up my what you, Wikipedia uh, things. Look at look at mine. Your net worth? I don't yeah, think I don't think you're on here. Two hundred thousand dollars or something. So like, well, where is it? Uh, that's, like, that's like five Jean, million to me right now. Where is it? Gene is um four hundred million. Gene, you know it doesn't. It, that's all, like, you know, great and everything. But, you know, I don't, I wasn't raised with money. And when I first uh, met Ace and I went out to. I looked up, points I looked up yours. It says 18 pop cans. Excuse me? I looked up yours. It says 18 pop cans. Right. I just looked it up and it said something like, I don't know, 200,000 or something. Like weird. Of myself, and I was just like, Well, that's oh, you know what? Right I found one right here for you answer.com strange girlfriend slash one, whatever. I have to get drink up here back. Yep, uh, says your father's name is Mr. Gordon, and your mother's name is Mrs. Asking Gordon. Too much? Is it asking too much to live in a fucking to have a house, a roof over my head? I can't make it if I get, if they're going to throw me out, out when I don't pay rent here, and then I'm going to be out in the desert at 120. How tall are you? I got that right. That's what it says right here. Five. It says you're in your 50s. It says you're 5'5", five, five, and your net worth is $100,000. If your net worth is $100,000, and... This isn't training. What else? Her why, why does the whole band think this is all right? How come everybody here to like delete? If you could dare another, if you could, like if I was forced, in that world. Hypothetical. Like who do I think is cute? Date another rock star. Who, who would it be? Yep. 
without a doubt, it'd be a country singer. Garth Brooks. Uh, you know what? I, it was Jamie Johnson. I never heard of him. Uh, never heard of him. I mean, he sounds like he's just. Uh, when we I found out about him. I sing a lot of verses. I lived on the property in um, Westchester, and I just couldn't. I was blown away by his voice. And then I saw this thing where he, he played at the Grand Old Opry for George Jones' birthday at George Jones Pride. And a lot of the old country singers <sighs> stopped listening to country until they found out about this guy. And because he really, truly has a voice, uh, it's a combination of all your favorite old country guys, you know, like and and, and Waylon Jennings and and Hank Williams and George George Jones and just all like and, like all the greats. He sounds like all of them rolled up in one. It's amazing. His voice is fucking what? Six million. <laughs> I don't care about that. This I, is I net live worth. In a fucking log cabin, that guy. It doesn't matter. I live in a log cabin anyway. He's single. But, you know, I would, it would just be a country. It would be a country guy because I can't, you know. Um, fuck this. You know what? I. Oh shit! Hello. Yeah, I'm here. I don't know how to get you back. That's a, um. I mean, I, I want to. I want the kind of life where I, what I do is nurtured. And Ace promised since I met him, you're a singer and you cry and cry all the time. I will help you with your aspirations, with what you want to do, you know, it's because he took off in 2018. I was getting death threats by his, okay, I found out by calling an old friend of Ace's. How is it mysterious? I was, was it one of the ghosts? What? I said, how was it mysterious? It was one of the ghosts at your old place? No, I just called, um, not long ago, I called an old friend of Ace's and and I was telling him what happened, and he was just completely flipped out of, like, he acted really paranoid and nuts, and he said he hated Ace's guts. And this is a guy who was a really, really good friend of Ace. Not in the industry, not an industry guy, a guy, a nice guy, a regular guy that was an old friend of his, who he's known for years and years and years. He said, Ace, I, I never want to see the guy again. What he did was this and this. So horrible. And I was like, well, what did he do? You know, because I was like, look, the guy's like, I said, what do I do? I mean, I'm left with nothing. What am I, do you know where he is? He wouldn't give me straight answers. It's weird. But anyway, what I was just getting back, you, you're asking me too many questions, and, I, and I, I have PTSD. I didn't eat dinner, blah, blah, blah. I was just talking about Jamie Johnson. I said I want a simple thing, a guy who, who goes and does what he does and plays music and nurtures what I do. So I'm a singer. Also, I sing country. I sing country like nobody's business there's an interview where ace is saying she can sing anything and that's true i don't brag about what i can and can't do I sounds like you're singing the blues what <laughs> sounds like i'm singing the blues yeah i can sing the shit out of the blues yeah, i can yeah. sing i can really truly really sing anything i really can and that's true but Wait, is this i would want to be the guy who nurtured the fact that i'm a singer too maybe saying with me or whatever but also you know what? I want a, a, a guy. Uh, I like guys who are funny and guys who are uh, well. For, you know, I gotta say that funny wins. Funny, funny has to win. Oh, yo, so yo, we gotta yo, go yo, back and go. Yourself. Well, you, you, you said musician. You said if you're gonna do the musician, who would you date? Celebrity. But you know, I have to say, I don't think about celebrities. I don't go, gee, what celebrity am I gonna date? I, I met Ace. I was introduced to say Ace. You know by some weird woman I don't even know. I was brought to his concert by an ex-boyfriend. I met him through a woman I don't even know, a, a weird older woman that knew him and said, I know Ace, you want to be Ace? Oh and, God. but I have to say that funny is something so important to me that I wouldn't have lasted all those years Thanks. People say, well, why didn't you leave? Well, because he was, if he was, he, he could be very funny and very, very charming. And we cracked up a lot. It, if that wasn't going on, there's no way I would have been able to stay with him because I can't. Somebody has to have a sense of humor like that. Funny. Jonah Hill. I would marry the shit out of Jonah Hill. Really? I would marry the shit out of Vince Vaughn. But they got to be on and funny. Not just funny, like, you know, but funny all the time. Carrot Top. Gross. No. Carrot Top's not even funny. That's like, you know, stupid. It's not even, it's, he's not funny. 
Theo Vaughn. No, somebody I like. I like a man with quick tips. Joey Diaz. I don't know who that is. He's I pretty, like Sebastian he's Maniscalco. Pretty married. fucking funny. Joey Diaz is. Tells, I don't know who that is. Funny matters a lot. That's all I'm going to say. Funny comes in on the lead. If somebody can make me laugh, you know, and get to my brain, the rest they get automatically have it. You know, if the guy's charming and funny enough. Funny is a big, big deal, though. Can't make me laugh. Then if I'm funny and they're not funny, it's never going to work out. You know? Tell me a joke, Rachel. I don't know any jokes right I, that I can remember right now. I'm in a trailer in the middle of the desert. Isn't that a joke at us? You fail as a joke. You fail as a comedian. This was your big break. Yeah, I'm not exactly ready to get on uh, to go in, in comedy mode right now, Ram, because I didn't eat dinner and I didn't even eat breakfast and I ate a couple of little things all day. And I don't know where. And I have. Twenty dollars to my name, and I just spent twelve years of my life. I just gave twelve years and twenty-four hours a day to one of the biggest, most famous rock superstar heroes in the world, not just in our country, in the fucking world. And I don't know how I'm going to survive. My car has bad tires. It has um, the registration is expired, and my driver's license is expired, and it's it's way over hundred degrees. What kind of car you drive? So pardon me if I'm not a laugh riot right now. Huh? What kind of car you drive? Um, when Ace left, he took my Jaguar XK that he bought for me, and I also had a Bentley. And somebody intervened and said, oh, let me help you sell the Bentley. I got ripped off like you're not even gray. Like you would, I mean... I was told, oh, you, you, you know, I, I could only sell it for this much, and so you can only get a, a car for this much, and so I also, I should, I should actually, I should say what kind of car I have because I don't want to say that's gonna, that's easy for someone to find me. Uh, next question. I can't even say that. Okay. Um, you know, it's. It can't be driven anyway. It, I have like no. I it, it can't be sold because someone stole all the papers out of the glove compartment. All oh, everything was stolen. Is it a nice car? The registration's up. My license is up. I have I have twenty dollars to my name. And I got this guy over here asking me who I date if I dated another celebrity. For God's sake. I mean, I, I don't know. Someone nice. Somebody nice, Ram. Somebody nice, somebody really funny, and somebody nice. Somebody hilarious. Someone on, on their toes. Somebody that comes in with their boots on and goes, hey, baby! You know? Make me Bloody Mary. Yeah. And I'm not a drinker. But I'll be fucking goddamn if I'm going to be another guy with another guy that's that's sober. Because I, don't, I like to have a glass of wine once in a while. Or a little shot of tequila once in a while. And I did not mind sacrificing that for Ace because oh, it meant a lot to me fashion. that he quit drinking. And it meant and his sobriety and him being proud of it. That all made me happy. And I don't need to drink. I enjoy having a good glass of wine or a really, really premium shot of tequila once in a while. But the like, thing about me is that I don't even drink a whole Boone's half farm. glass of wine. I won't even finish a half glass of wine. I'll just sip on it. And Ace used to make fun of me because once in a while he'd say, Why don't you get a shot of tequila? What's the matter with you? Get a fucking shot. And then he'd laugh. He'd, everyone around us, he'd say, She can't even do a whole shot. Watch, watch it go. Because I get a shot of, of tequila and then I, 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 I'll take a sip of it and set it down and I can't drink the whole thing. So I never do my whole life. Even my friends that have known me since I was in, you know, since I was in my 20s or high school or whatever, they're like, I've never seen you drunk and I've never seen you be able to do a whole shot. I just take a little sip of it and set it down. But I mean, you know, I like guys that can drink without getting stupid. I like men that can drink without getting, you know, hammered. And if they do get hammered, then I hope they're really funny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ace always says you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have liked me, you know, you wouldn't have been, you wouldn't have liked me when I in, in the old days when I drank. And I and I said I actually I would have because you were funny. 
you know what I'm saying? I, in the old interviews, he was eight funny. Were you ever with but, uh, Ace when he uh, fell off the wagon? Excuse me? So were you ever around Ace when he fell off the wagon? Was I on him? No, were you around him? Were you around Ace when he fell off? He fell off the wagon in, in 2018, but not with booze. Oh, I know what you're doing. Oh, with yes, what? Yes, yes. Drugs. What kind? Oh, no. Handfuls and fucking handfuls of, of dangerous pills. If there was drinking when he left, he came home and he was crying and, and begging my, my well, forgiveness. Can you get I don't deserve to be a poodle. Please take me back. And he was a real mess. I mean, that guy gets emaciated like that. He was gone for a couple months. He came back and he was fucked. I said, geez. He said, I'm strung out, poodle. I'm fucking strung out. There was these whores that they, was, they wanted to party. And he told me all this shit. I, I had him in the sun. I nursed him back to health. I completely helped him. So he cheated on you then? And, huh? He cheated on you then? Anyway, he didn't smell like booze, okay? And there was no booze opened up at the house. And he didn't smell like alcohol at all. I, I, it, it, I'll, I'll tell you that what happened is his relapse start his his relapse behavior um started when he started thinking about a reunion because I think in his mind he's he's going back to oh my god and he would say hey, kid, i gotta get in the costume and i was like i'm sure that you guys can work something out with costumes like what you know no 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 i gotta get this right i was like look you know you're too old you don't want to get skinny like a 20 year old that's gonna look unhealthy in my opinion he looks like he doesn't look good right now somebody's not taking care of him he looks like shit right now but um when he relapsed it wasn't just handfuls of amphetamines and handfuls of painkillers, Norco painkillers. The thing that made him go way, way, way over fucking board were these pills called trazodone. And he would take them in combination with all this other stuff. And Ace doesn't take pills like other people. Ace takes hands, but like if you give Ace a prescription, you say, okay, you just take this much. The doctor does that. He, he gets in bed and takes handfuls, doesn't even look at what he's taking, handfuls, and he crunches them. He likes the way they taste, so he, he likes to crunch them, he crunches them. Trazodone is uh, an antidepressant. And I, said, What's that for? I noticed them because I, they're weird looking pills. I was like, what are these? I don't like these because ever since you start taking these, you're acting violent. You're having violent outbursts. You're, you're forgetting it the next day. And he's like, those are for my ADD. Or he'd say, those are for me to sleep. Trazodone's an antidepressant. Pounding him and going in violent rages. He threw a deer hunting knife at me. He took off. It was a, a nightmare. That was a nightmare. And I read about those, and I read that they make people psychotic and stuff. So I, I still have his text. I'm sorry. I didn't know that they made you... They made men, you know, get violent and psychotic and stuff. And I'm gonna, I'll never take him again. Well, that didn't happen because we moved out of that first house where Gene put his hands on me, and we moved into a, even a bigger house, we moved into the mansion where the ambush happened, and there they were by the bed again. And I was just like, oh, oh my God, no, 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 you know? Try to don't antidepressant. Start happening. What? Trazodone's an antidepressant. I've never seen any kind of like he his he turned into another person. He 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 didn't remember what he said, and he got violent, and ch he took to chasing me. And um, tell me about that. Threw a fucking deer hunting knife at me. It was huge. He unsheathed it. I was sitting on the bed having my coffee one morning at in, in the bridges at Spanish at the house where Gene put his hands on me. And I had the doors open. It was nice out. And I was sitting on this beautiful morning. And he went out to his office and he came back in. He unsheathed a huge deer hunting knife, you know, out of the leather thing. Right. You know? And he goes, you know what this could do to a woman's body? And I was like, no. I was like, what? 
he threw the fucking knife at me. If I wasn't quick on, I, I don't know how the hell. I'm telling you right now, I had my legs stretched out in front of me on the bed, and I was having my coffee, and I dodged that fucking the deer hunting knife was like this, this wide. It was like that tall. A machete? No, a deer hunting knife. I mean, he hurled it at me so fast. And it was so scary. I, I, I dodged it, moved my leg out of the way. Had I not done it, Rem, I would not be sitting here. Or I wouldn't have legs. Why did he throw it at you, though? I mean, just out of nowhere? Then he went, then I, I was I was hysterical. And he was doing that weird cackle, laugh. And he walked out into the yard. Like that was a really funny little stunt that he did or something. Like he did a card trick or something. There is no reason why. What was There's the, no reason why. What was the conversation after he threw the knife? What'd you say? Prior to throwing the knife, we were talking about his ex-girlfriend and which one disappeared and how and he was saying he, he said there's a lot of people that disappeared in the uh in the past, poodle. What was the post conversation? They didn't do what, they were supposed to do. Huh? what was the post conversation? Were you like, what the fuck? You just threw a knife at me? What the fuck? You just threw an knife at me. It was pretty much the conversation. What the fuck? You threw an knife at me. I went out in the yard and I said, what the fuck? You know, pretty much what the fuck? Like, hey, why did you just do that to me? What is wrong with you? You know, listen to me. The Trasno made him do weird shit like run, chase me. Um, his behavior became so insane. Tell me and, about chasing you. Belligerent. And chase you around the house? He would chase me out of the house and around the house, outside. I got in the car a couple times and took off. He was punching the car. I thought he was going to kill me or something. How big was your backyard? I don't know how to gauge that. You can look up the the house and the bridges. I mean, I don't know how to, I don't know. Big? Little? It was like a giant property. Uh, the, the bridges were are like um, that gated community is the wealthiest gated community in the state. Bill Gates has a house in there. A lot of people do. A lot of famous athletes. A lot of famous politicians. Who's your neighbor? There. Excuse me? Who is your neighbor? Anybody famous? I just told you some of them. No, I mean like anybody I know. It's not like famous people don't hang out together. Actor. You know what I mean? It's like you know, like there was all these famous politicians and and the and the and the, the country club. They're always trying to get the neighbors are always trying to get Ace to go to the country club, and Ace's like, I ain't going there. Why? So people can bother me, fucking talk to me, and ask me questions and shit. That's why I'm over. I stay in the house. You know, he didn't want to. He doesn't like to leave. Uh, and and I don't. Well, there must have been past politicians, right? That. You know, people found you. Huh? Past politicians, then, right? Not current. Yeah, like people. Yes, like I was. Yeah, you know, politicians. I don't want to. I don't want to give up where they live. I don't want. I don't want to. How fast is Ace? Lives here. You know, I don't want to do that. But it's guards. It's on lockdown there. The guards are packing. How fast is Ace? Him. He's fucking fast, especially when he's loaded. Because he's, you know, I'll tell you something. He's not very fast. He's, I thought when I first met him. Yeah. On our first date. I remember one of our, and it's a date that stands out because I took him to Santa Monica to the beach in the middle of the night to go down and, and run barefoot in the water. He said he never did that with a woman in his life. And I remember I at that point, I was starting to notice how fucking slow he is, you know, moving. And I said, what do you want? You know, I was like, what do you want? Because, man, you're, I was like, what do you, man, you walk really, really slow. What are you on? He's like, and then he explained, you know, I, he said, I, I got, he goes, I got trouble walking. He goes, that, that song is, is fucking true. And I was like, I don't know. I don't even know the song. So I was like, what? And he's like, he's like, I'm slow. I don't have to hurry for anybody. And I was like, well, that's true. But I, I honestly thought it was because he's loaded and it's not because he's loaded because he's pigeon toed and he walks slow and that's just how it is um um but when he started taking trazodone and pounding all those drugs together 
And he drinks a Snapple. He doesn't drink. Sorry, I'm, I'm, my foot just fell because I'm sitting on the ground. He doesn't. He would pound them and drink a free Snapple, but he. The Trazodone just took his brain and just went. Real, turned into a fucking maniac where he was running his ass off. Running after yeah. you or just running in general? When he was a kid, he was a good runner, he said. He was good at track and shit when he was a kid, but I'm talking about when he's an old man. He was not fast, but when he took the combo of whatever the fuck he was taking, and I don't even know half of it. He would hide things. I found a big bottle this big of uh, generic amphetamine, white generic amphetamine pills. Just said amphetamine on the, on the thing up in his studio at the mansion, way up high. You know, I saw it, but I had to climb up to get it. And I was like, Mother, you know, look at this. And I was like, Damn it, you know, because I knew right then that that was the only thing he was hiding and that was the only thing he'd be taking. You know that because you know someone's behavior when you spend over a decade of time with a person. Maybe he's trying to get in the fitness. You know? What? Maybe he was trying to get into fitness. That's why he was doing all that running around. He's not trying to get into fitness. He wanted you to join with him so he'd he chase you. He won't work out. For, and you know what? I don't... He shouldn't. He swims a lot. He swam a lot. Swimming is... And look this up. And I grew up around a family where everyone's fit. You know? Mm-hmm. Uh, and I grew up dancing and swimming. And those are the two things that are the best exercise, dancing and swimming and sex. But those are the three best, that's the best exercise you can get. You work out your whole body. And they only took part in two of those? I I try to dance every day. I'm not happy right now. When I'm happy, I dance. And I haven't sang or danced in a really long time, and it's a drag. And I want to cry when I think about that. But awful that he would do something like that to me to all this not even just just i mean you know what all i want is a house that's all i want is a house and um i i gave him what i i get i i, I thought of his book i wrote songs for him i helped him with his work i helped him with every single aspect of his life for 12 years straight and i need help getting a house and and that's all i care about so i can just go back to singing and doing what i do and decorating and doing what I'd like to do. Anyway, he swam and uh, it, it, his legs are bad. You know, uh, if I would try to massage his shins or his ankles because his ankles and his legs bother him a lot, he was like, ow, you know, because he, you know, all the years of bending around in platforms and all that on stage, took his toll on his legs, you know, but it's happened to a lot of rock stars, but uh, he can't get like, you know, he can't go into a gym. God, can't do stuff like that. He needs exercise. Sw- he needs swimming and maybe a little bit like you know, just like taking small barbells and stuff. A little bit of that and walks. He loves to walk, but then he likes hurt him and he, and he gets. He's got to rest after about forty-five minutes. You go to Vegas. You got to rest after forty-five minutes and, and t- sit down for a little bit with him and stuff. You know, I took care of him very much in that in that aspect. So. so what's your game plan, Rachel? I don't have a game plan. I need to get a house. I need a house. And I need the man that spent 12 years with me to to, to help me get one. And otherwise, I hate to say it, um, it's going to really fucking suck to be him. Because um, fraud, forgery, and identity theft happen to be very, very fucking illegal. Yeah. I don't I don't give a fuck what happens to Jean because of what Jean did to me because Jean did Jean, what Jean did to me is called rape you can say sexual assault holding a person down and shoving your fingers in their vagina happens to be rape you know uh, I you know I don't know um the whole thing is a nightmare. I just, I, I, I need a house. I don't want to be fucking left alone, you know, to, 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 
be be with my be with my friends and decorate my house you know have my antiques and 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 work on my art you know what i mean and i also i want to say something else which is very important that i say this is very very important that i say this i want to say this and i want people to listen to me because i don't just want to sing and i don't just want to do my house and i do want to do those i sing no matter what you know that album's got to come out by the way there's a dem there's a there's a duet of the and on that album that is very very good and i, I want it to come out i'm proud of the album I want the album to come out. Why can't you put it out? Why? Huh? Why can't you put it out? Well, in the first place, he when he came back in 2018, and I told him that I was recording it, he promised me and the guys I recorded it with that he would get me a label, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And E1 said, listen, we're really interested in, in, in the album. And Warner Brothers did. Since Ace walked out, they all, like, everything. No one will talk to me. You put it on Spotify right now. Turn their backs on me. It's it's not even pressed. It's done being mixed. Ace paid for it to get mixed and promised everything and then never never kept his promise on anything. You could put it on Spotify right now. I gotta discuss that with the guys and I have to get a record deal first. It's not like that. It's not that kind of party. You know, I toured before Ace. I toured in Europe before Ace, you know, with my own deal. But I, that's not what I want to talk about right now. But I want to get across to something else that I want to do. Um, because I want, and I did you see the house in Quartzsite that I wanted? Yeah. In the desert? Well. It costs more than his net worth. I want, it costs less than a car. I'm sorry, what? I thought it was like 1.5. It costs less than a fucking car. I thought it was like 1.5 million. Well, that's what the Zillow said. I, I look. I'm just telling you the way that it is. All right. And Ace has plenty of money for that house. Ace has plenty of money. Period. Ace never ran out of fucking money ever. He's got money all over the house. Don't be fooled, brother. What if you offered him? Anyway, I want to open. I want to open. Um. Uh, a retreat for women that are abused in the industry. And it's not that I don't, that I'm not caring about other women. I care about all women. But I want it to be a retreat for women in the industry because the unspoken reality thing that I name all my all my things, that I only... How much would you charge for that? Is something... Well, it has to be open for women that were left like me with nothing. So it would be free? It would depend on the person. It would have to be like, you know, um, if they could donate, that would be great. Donate to you. If they were left with nothing, they are still welcome. But I don't want religion to be a part of it. I don't want seminars and preaching to be a part of it. I don't want any of that. It has to be and a I want time to be frame. after a hippie ranch that my parents own in the late 60s early 70s when i was a baby and it was called mother marlowe's after my cousin who i was raised with she was like a sister to me because i was raised inseparable with her never but do the acid ranch called, the, the, the ranch was actually a, like a, a real ranch that was um tom waits used to go there and hang it was called um, john wayne came, tom waits oh, okay Person in San Diego was hanging around, you know. Mm -hmm. But it was called Mother Marlowe's peanut butter spread because my sister um, smeared peanut butter all over everything. No one cared. But it also was late 60s and early 70s. But I want to call it Mother Marlowe's because um, my sister was so nurturing and so very motherly and sweet. And uh, Did you ever do acid? Not around anymore, but I want to name it after her. And I want it to be a, a retreat. Just a minute. Were you asking you? I want it to be a retreat for women to sing and have bonfires and hang around, sort of like, and have other women to talk to. You know what I mean? Right. And relax, and also think about what artistic thing that they they want to hone in on that they haven't even that their maybe their husband told them they couldn't do or wouldn't support or you know 
a place where they can just completely be themselves and relax, a retreat that has nothing to do with teaching or religion or fucking AA or NA or any of that shit, you know? Not a center, you know? But a place for women to go and uh, find themselves and talk to other women in a fun, relaxing, slumber party sort of situation, no matter how old they are, so that they can hone in on their their ten year old. You know what I mean? Sounds fucking you costly. Me if I ever ate acid? Yep. Yep. Yes, I did in my in my twenties. Not as much as everyone else did, but. Care of a bad trip? No. No, I never had a. I never, in the words of Jim Morrison, since you've got that shirt on, I never had a bummer on acid. I didn't, I never had a, I never had a bad time on it. No. And I ate, I ate it in the, in the, you know, when I was in my twenties, when everybody was eating it, but we lived hippie style. You know, we lived in this, me and my friends all lived together and we, it was like about growing vegetables and going to the beach and we were wearing like old vintage thirties uh, dresses and stuff, listening to blues, listening to old blues records. And, and stuff, and it was a happy, healthy thing. It was it was about, we all made food together and ate a little acid and went down to the beach and stuff. It was beautiful, you know, it wasn't like, it wasn't, it wasn't anything like, you know, how teenagers are today doing very, 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 very dangerous things. I'm not saying to do acid, I'm not saying, oh yeah, hey, make sure it's acid, I don't wanna push that across, but. We had a, a, a wonderful time doing that, and nobody was doing death drugs or anything like that. It wasn't allowed in the house. And uh, yeah, so we ate mushrooms and stuff too. When was the last time you did some psychedelic drugs, Rachel? Oh my God. I don't know, when I was uh, maybe 26. There's no peyote out in the desert by you? Going wild. I'm sure there is. I wouldn't. I wouldn't know or care. I'm not gonna. I'm not. I'm sure. Like I'm in this. I'm not. I'm not even in the state of mind to go there. You right. have to be really happy. I think that's something like that. You know, you have to. If you want to go out to Joshua Tree and be happy, you go out to the desert and have a groovy time and have go to Papi and Harriet and play music and maybe, you know, eat some mushrooms or something. If, if that's what they're trying to get me on right now, oh, is she freaked out on drugs? No, I'm not. People, I don't even smoke grass. Guess what? I never smoked grass. I never? Did, my parents, my parents both smoked grass and I couldn't smoke, but like the, the shake from it, like they roll me a shitty joint using the shake in my, in my twenties and I, I can smoke that, but I'm not a good weed smoker, so I don't even smoke weed. If I, I don't know. Like I said, I like to have a little glass of wine once in a while and stuff. I'm not a loady. I'm not a I'm not into, I'm not into drugs. No, I just brought it up. You were talking about hippie communes and shit. That's what came to yeah, my but, mind. Uh, yeah, you know, everyone that's so cliche, everybody thinks that. My mom was throwing turquoise parties. Uh everybody was dressed up like cowboys and Indians. We had horses with you know, music playing all the time. It was about blues, we had stand up pianos, antiques and uh you know, it was kind of, it was an old um, ranch from the 1880s for real, you know, and they, they bought part of it. And so we had like a little saloon and everything. It was really great. I was a little, little tiny kid with goats, horses, uh, but my mom and my aunt and their friends were, like I said, having turquoise parties and making the house look groovy and stuff. It wasn't about, it wasn't about a bunch of stinky hippies. They were like, it's a, tur- on it's a turquoise party. Hippies. Huh? It was a turquoise party. Well, it's the same as a Tupperware party, except for there's turquoise. Hmm. We had an antique store that had like, you know, old, uh, you know, in those days, you could you could go prospecting, you know, like people, my parents, they could prospect and they'd go on these digs and they would find all these Navajo baskets and far out like Indian stuff, Indian artifacts and stuff. And uh, so we had an antique store on the ranch. And um, because you cool. were allowed to do that in those days, you didn't have to, you didn't get in trouble, you know. Um, so yeah, we had Victrolas, stand up pianos, and you know, Robert Johnson playing and stuff like that, you know, but bacon and eggs for breakfast, and 
people running around having a really wonderful time. I didn't grow up with any uh anything horrible. I never even knew, you know, anybody like Kiss. I never even knew that I would meet a man that would be this horrible to me, that would want me to not have a roof over my head and, and, and ignore me like I was dead and, and not want me to have food or money to live. I mean, you know, I, I, I said earlier, way earlier in our interview, um, that I would like to move on with my life. There's a lot of things I'd like to do. I want to do the Mother Marlowe's thing. I want to do retreats for women that are lost, that have been abused in the industry by powerful men. But you've got to have a root. You have to have a house to be able to do, to be able to move on. You can't just move on without a house to live in. So what are you trying to do? I mean, are you are you trying to cat? Are you are you trying to uh, collect on the lawsuit that you want, or, or would you rather settle? I made myself clear about what I need and what I want. House, money to live. How much money? Right. But you heard. But I did make myself clear that that's what I want, right? Yes. And I want to sing. I want to have Mother Marlowe's retreat. Who's going to pay the taxes? No. But I'm not going to give. I'm not going to give a figure, and I'm not going to get into the case. Who's going to pay? I mean, you know, when you say you want a house, do you want the you want the house bought, obviously, but what about your taxes and you know your bills and shit? Does I that... need money to live. So that's okay. You think I'm asking too much after over a decade for the guy. You think I'm asking too much? Hardly. No, I'm not. Any other one? You're going. Yeah. You know what? Not only do I want that, but I want that too, and I want that, and I want a fucking mansion in Malibu, and this and this, and um, you know, a big giant Mick mansion in fucking Calabasas. I don't, I'm not asking for that. I'm asking for a house and I want to refurbish antiques and refurbish, you know, other, you know, old houses and stuff and do this retreat. And, um, and there's a lot, of, the reason that I would like to cater to and have retreat for women also in the industry is because people need to understand the narcissism that the level of it. Like you're going to take it, say, say I'm chasing some doctor, okay, or some fucking, some dentist, some regular businessman that is horrible. I'm not saying it's, because it's horrible no matter what for a man to mistreat you and for you to be raped and for you to, be, to go through that. But the power that is behind a superstar, a rock band, or an actor or something is is a, a whole other fucking level. It's a whole other level. It's a level where they really are positive that they are untouched. I didn't even know what narcissism was until I had to learn about it. So one of my ex-boyfriends sent me this video and said, this is what ACE is. Learn about this. This is what ACE is. And I was like, oh my God. And I, and I listened to it and I went, oh my God. I started, you know, really, really studying and going, Jesus, do I ever help this? Can I ever, can I ever help this? go away with him can i ever you know i had to learn about it but but the reason i want to cater to women in the industry on all levels is because the narcissism and the control that comes with a man with the power that power that gene and Ace have where they go look we can make anything happen and we're above the law and you don't no one's ever going to listen to you again. Making statements like that. No one will ever. We will make sure no one ever listens to you. We will make sure nothing ever happens to you. We will make sure that your life is going to be very, very difficult the rest of your life. But to make a statement that scary and horrifying is, is a level that uh, unless you are married to someone in the industry, you don't understand that, that level. You know? Right. Yeah, I mean, so I want that's what I want to do. Um, you know, I want Mother Marlowe's to be a place where women can come and sit by a bonfire, women can, you know, uh, they can have a margarita, they can, they can, there's, they can, there's no clocks. By the way, you know what? It, it, yeah, the cell phone and the clocks, all that shit out the window. I'm done. When this whole thing's over, I want the fucking 
I'm getting rid of my cell phone to the point of hammering it and throwing it in Lake Mead. Not doing it anymore. I'm getting the 70s phones, those princess phones with the cord on the goddamn wall with an answer machine, you know? And it's like, if somebody calls and I answer great, this this like glued to the phone shit all day is insanity. I don't even, if I wasn't going through what I'm going through, I wouldn't be doing it. I don't blame you. Drag. I don't ever answer my phone. Anyway, I need, I, I, I want a house out in the desert and I, and I want to fix it up and do that and get busy and sing. And I want to open up this very, very, very important retreat for women. All folks in the industry, but women that are, have been abused or are being abused or are trying to get away from an abusive situation in the industry, in the entertainment industry. And it's also really scary for women to deal with it in the industry because everyone turns their backs on you and they have so much power that nobody will listen. Lawyers are fucking paid off. I've had some dirty fucking lawyers, let me tell you. Dirty fucking lawyers and very malice. You fucking asshole. Gene's lawyer threatened every aspect of my life. He said, we will make sure nothing happens for you in your life. We will make sure nobody signs anything you write. We will make sure your record doesn't come out. We will make sure she screamed at me. It was insane. It was like insane. Fuck this. I want a house and then I don't want to fucking know them. At all. I don't. I want a house and I want to, um, Jesus, you know, I mean, I need to, I need the retreat so that I can open up a retreat. Makes sense. I need to be compressed. I don't rest without having nightmares. I have nightmares constantly. That's part of PTSD. You hear a loud noise, anything, you jump. I wake up, I have terrible nightmares. I'd be chased. Terrible, gruesome, like bloody nightmares. Awful. And I, I don't, I'm not the kind of, I don't have nightmares like that. Too. But when I was, you know, before any of this stuff, I didn't have nightmares. Very rarely, very, very rarely. No? That sucks. Yeah, I mean, getting chased around, knife thrown at you and shit. You know what I mean? I bet you definitely has some uh, effect on you. Being raped sure. by Gene. Being raped by Gene is, is um, I have been raped in my life. You know, Ramsey. Uh, it happened to me when I was when I was a teenager, and it happened to me before my life. But there isn't anything. Let me say this, and I want to speak to the audience. I want to speak to whoever's listening to me. Because it happens all the time and it happens a lot to men as well. But I want to tell you, you know, when you're at home and you have your little, you have your home that you decorated and your husband that you love and trust, who's older and protective of you and you're used to that. And you just made your house beautiful and your husband's friend comes in the house and, you know, along through the day when you're getting coffee from people and being polite and you know and all that stuff your husband's friend comes into your into your beautiful zone your beautiful Alice my, my Alice in Wonderland have my safety you know right my, my palace that's safe to me and it's also guarded by guard gate by the way you know which is very locked down but when you're when you're when someone comes into your private home holds you down with one arm and then shoves their fingers up under your dress, down your bikini bottoms and up into your vagina really hard until you're scared to death and there's some gross thing in your ear and you can't get away from it and you have to literally force yourself away. When that happens to you, it, it puts the, like the serious fear in you. You are so, I cannot tell you how scary that, that is. That's my house. That is my home. It's not like I went to a party and some creep did that to me. And I could run back to my safety zone, back to my home, and, you know, get over it. No, 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 no. No, no, no. This is something that happened in my home. 
that makes it, you know, from terrorizing to the ultimate terrorizing, scary. Yeah, I don't blame you, for sure. So, um, yeah, I'm pretty serious about, about the retreat that I want to open up, and I, it's something that I've been thinking about doing, and I have people who want to help me do it. So. Good for you. That's a good and, idea. Huh? That's a good for you. That's a good idea. I have a lot of antique furniture that I can't get out of storage. I owe money on. I don't have any money to eat, much less pay the storage as I can't do anything, but I want to get things out and and make a really beautiful retreat for women that are abused in the entertainment industry. Need to get away. Someplace where they can run. I had nowhere to run. Well, and I still have nowhere to go. Apparently you ran, ran all over them chasing you. I have, I'm having death threats still. I mean, still having death threats, scary death threats. Those are mostly like kiss fans. To go to. I want to make it where they can stay as long as they want, where they have a room that's private, where they, you know what I mean? Right. Maybe if they did something like they did something artistic, like I said before, and and their husband kept them from doing what they wanted to do, they they're able to do it, able to express it, like no preaching at anybody, like an no incubator, into it. like an incubator, an incubator, yeah. What do you mean? Incub Why would you say that? Why you an incubator is a place where people stay, right? If they have some kind of a skill or a talent. Oh, you mean before being born? No. At, they, you Would you get a cut? Is what I'm saying. An incubator is a place where people get to live for free, but they have a skill or a talent. They're able to do something. And the price for them living there is a uh, percentage of what they do. It's an incubator. I don't think there's anything wrong with it either. That's why I asked. I mean, and I'm not a communist. I'm not a communist, you know. Um, but there needs to be a place for women like me and women that like fucking OJ's wife and it, women that are just fucking terrorized. There needs to be some place for, for us to go. I don't think OJ's wife's going to, unless you get a ghost. You know what I mean. She, that shouldn't have happened. Well, they never... There needs to be a place for women to go, a retreat. And if you're left without a sense and threatened and scared to death, and uh, and your husband left you in, in dead and caused forgery, fucked your credit and all that stuff, there needs to be somewhere for you to be able to, to go and call home and really relax without looking at a clock or looking at a bill. Don't you understand that this is the fucking United States of America? Yes. Don't you understand that this is Southern California? Don't you understand that this is this is the way that it needs to be for people? There needs to be a place for women to go when they're abused. Yeah, that makes sense. I think it's a good idea. I think you should do it. It's a really good idea. I, 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 I want to do it. I have to have a home in, in order to do it. And I can get that house that I want in the desert. There's a lot of places I can get in the desert that are affordable. Did you get unemployment? Excuse me? Did you get unemployment, the pandemic unemployment? I didn't get it. It ends this week. I applied for it and they denied me. They denied me. I didn't get any, any, everyone I know got it. And then and they, they denied me. That sucks. It ends this week. I didn't get anything that they do, Don. Nothing. I, like I said, I have $20 right now. No gas in the car. I have just water. I have like a couple of things. 
refrigerator. I have a Greek yogurt, and I have olives, and I have like cheese and tortillas, and that's it. I have no food. That's all I have to eat. Did you hear that, James? No fucking food. You think Ace watches these? I assume so. Yeah, I think he does. I'm very hurt, Rusty, and I'm very... Like this, you know, this game ain't for no lame, you know? This is, this is hardcore. I'm just a little chick. I don't, you know, I don't know how Rusty to survive in the street. I don't know how to do that. I'm dead. If I could make it out of this trailer, I am going to die. Is there anything funny about that? You want me to get up and see? No, there's not funny about that. No, there isn't. <laughs> Who owns that trailer? I don't want to talk about it. People that I know. People I know. No, it's terrible. It really is. It's got to be hard. All right, Rachel. You take care. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye-bye. Have a good night. You too.